for the vast majority of my life, I didn't think I could run for anything as an openly gay candidate and be successful. I just never imagined getting to this place uh, where I was able to make history as the nation's first openly gay black member of Congress. You are now running in District 10, and this is the home of the Stonewall Riots. This is a place where uh, the gay liberation movement was birthed. Um, and you, as a city member of Congress, the first openly gay black uh, member of Congress, to run in this district is a pretty full circle moment, I would imagine. Uh, it, it is a full circle moment. You know, the Stonewall gave birth, as you mentioned, to the queer liberation movement in this country. Uh, and yet it has never had an openly gay representative in Congress. Uh, and my election would change that. Uh, you know, this district has given so much to me. Uh, it is a district where I have not only worked, but a district that made me into the person I am today. Uh, when you think about the fact that uh, I have spent most of my life closeted, it was the time that I spent in this district, in the village, in the West Village, uh, where I saw queer people, including queer people of color, live authentic lives that gave me the courage to do the same in my own life. Uh, and I've never looked back since. Uh, and so it's, it's really a joy to be running to represent the communities uh, that have given so much to me. And of course, uh, to, to now be living in the district and, and, to be, and to have already been in Congress fighting for the various communities that comprise this district. Uh, whether it's my work to protect fundamental rights through expanding the Supreme Court uh, and co-authoring the Freedom to Vote John R. Lewis Act, or, or my work to create a humane immigration policy in this country, uh, and of course, to lower costs for working families. Uh, you know, I grew up in the Baptist church where things have gotten better, but it is still taboo to be gay uh, and, and to, be, uh, to have grown up poor <laughs> and, and black on top of that. Uh, it is something that was an environment in which I never imagined someone like me could run for Congress, let alone get elected. Uh, I didn't have images growing up of, of queer people and um, sort of respected in, in public life, uh, whether on television or in politics. Uh, and I certainly didn't see queer people of color in those roles. Um, but it was the time that I spent in the village pe seeing people, real life human beings, uh, living authentically. For me, policy is personal. Uh, and I feel an urgency that, that too many of my colleagues still don't feel. Uh, and that's not only true of Republicans, that's true of some Democrats as well. And you know, when we, when we talk about expanding the Supreme Court, which still too many of my Democratic colleagues scoff at, it's because I'm one of the folks who's gonna be seeing their rights, fundamental rights stripped away. You know, whether it's marriage equality or the fundamental right to vote or 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 or, or the, the the right for, you know, same sex intimacy. These are things that are now called into question in Justice Alito's draft opinion, as I knew they would be a year before we saw that draft opinion that purported to overturn Roe v. Wade. Uh, when I introduced the Judiciary Act with Jerry Nadler and Hank Johnson in April of 2021, I knew we would come to this moment uh, when it comes to lowering costs for families at the gas pump or in the grocery store, uh, I feel an urgency based on my own experience of, uh, of, of, of food insecurity and, and, and frankly, housing insecurity and when it comes to investments in affordable housing as well, uh, such that I champion things like a windfall profits tax in this moment uh, for, uh, so that we can reap back, uh, get back money that is being price gouged right now by the big oil companies. Uh, and it's why I support the transformative investments in Build Back Better uh, to create, you know, many, many new units of affordable housing in this country. I know what it's like to, to struggle in those ways. And it's just not an academic exercise for me. It's something that uh, is, is part of who I am, frankly. It's, pers it's part of what made me into the person I am today. I am proud to have shifted the conversation in a positive direction in a bold direction around what needs to happen in order to save our ailing democracy from the threats of the far right. Our democracy faces its greatest threat since the Jim Crow era. And so I just, I just never imagined that someone growing up like that, uh, you know, to say nothing of the fact that for the vast majority of my life, I didn't think I could run for anything as an openly gay candidate and be successful. 
I just never imagined getting to this place uh, where I was able to make history as the nation's first openly gay black member of Congress uh, when I was sworn in in January of last year. 